Kul is a music lecturer at the Faculty of Fine Arts Performing Arts at Chiang Mai University. His research expertise is about ethnomusicology, the music of Southeast Asia and world music. He graduated with a PhD in music from SOAS, University of London in Music in 2017. His dissertation topic was Prachan, Music, Competition and Conceptual Fighting in Thai Culture, which received the highly commended dissertation award in 2017. He also holds an MA degree in musicology from Mahidol University with a research topic on the P9 sound system and its characteristics, which also received the Outstanding Thesis Award in 2009. He was a music lecturer on Thai music in relation to Southeast Asia and Asian cultures at the University of London and also at the University of Northern Colorado in the USA. He has participated in several conferences in the UK, the US and other countries on aspects of music and culture, such as the ICTM World Conference in Kazakhstan and Thailand, and also the BFE Annual Conference in England. He has written articles about music and its influence on Thai society for culture and empathy, the International Journal of Sociology, Psychology and Cultural Studies, in 2018 on the article K-pop as a means to an end among Thai youth and also for BBC Thai in 2017 from Hong Kong to Thai politics. Apart from his academic background, he is also a Thai musician who is interested in different genres of music such as traditional, folk, contemporary and experimental music. As a member of the Korpai band, since 2004, he has been performing traditional and contemporary Thai music in several concerts, particularly in Asia and European countries. Let us now listen to Dr. Leitako's presentation. Across the world, the concept of identity plays a key role in representing musicians' musical proficiency and the musical value in the society. In traditional Lana music, the notion of Pinbia musical identity and its revitalization has inspired discussion among musicians and music scholars regarding its existence in modern Lana society. Pinbia, a shared resonated black stick sita, is generally recognized as an ancient instrument representing the musical identity of northern Thailand. After Joro P. Dyke, an American ethnomusicologist carried out his research on Pinbia music and published an article, The Vanishing Pinbia in 1975. Thai musicians and music scholars have raised concerns about the loss of Pinbia music and its unique sonic identity of Lanna culture. This makes a new generation of musicians try to revitalize and learn how to play this musical instrument thoughtfully. However, the identity and styles of Pinbia performance have developed and are varied over the last decade, according to the change of Lanna Music Society. Even though Pinbia music is preserved, there are few music scholars and academic articles identify the change of Pinbia's musical identity and its variety in different areas of Lanna region. Based on my field research in northern Thailand in 2021, in exploring the musical identity of Pinbia music in Lanna region, I found that the sonic characteristics of Pinbia have been developed through musicians' musical aesthetics by creating their own musical expressions and unique techniques with the ideology of living Pinbia. This presentation will illustrate the diversity of Pinbia and how musicians embody their musical vernacular in modern Lana culture. Pinbia is two to five strings chest resonated black stick sitar, which is considered as one of the most ancient musical instruments in northern Thailand. Apparently, Pinbia's iconography is quite similar to other ancient stick sitars in Southeast Asia, such as Cambodia, 
Vietnam and Indonesia influenced by Indian culture. The distinctive sound of pinpia is traditionally produced by plucking the box string with fingers to create an overtone with the movement of resonator musical techniques. It illustrates the beauty of sound and melody in relation to the way of people folk life in northern Thailand. Apparently, the quiet and mellow sound of Pinpia culturally illustrates nostalgic scene of masculinity as a man who play hard music to court women in the village. This becomes the role and image of Pinpia in northern Thailand that is mainly used for the amorous aim. In 1967-69, Joro Pidai, an American ethnomusicologist, carried out his research on Pinbiak music in Northern Thailand. At the time, he was a music teacher at Theological Seminary in Chiang Mai, while he conducted his fieldwork in Chiang Mai and Lampung province. He was surprised when he first found the Pinbiak instrument in the antique shop in Chiang Mai, but nobody knew what it was called. He finally found Nai Tan, a retired farmer 75 years old who used to play four-string pinpia since his youth for his courtship and marriage. Now we give an example of the sound identity of Nai Tan playing four-string pinpia on Pama piece. Then, Joro Pidai found the rest six pinpia players in Lampun and Chiang Mai province, which mostly claim that people nowadays didn't know how to play this instrument anymore. Therefore, Joro Pidai argued that the long history of pinpia was nearly forgotten. And in fact, um, there remain only a few old men who can play this instrument. In 1975, he published an academic article, The Vanishing Pinpia an ethnomusicological photo story based on events that happened in Northern Thailand in 1969. This article has a large impact on the Lana music circle and culture. So, Thai musicians and music scholars have raised concern about the loss of Pin Pia and its sonic identity of Lana culture. Apparently, this made famous folk musicians and music scholars such as Jalan Monopet and Brasit Liu Pong supported all musicians to learn Pinpia from living Pinpia players such as Ui Peng Noja and Ui Bun Ma. Nowadays, Pinpia becomes well known among all musicians, and a new generation of musicians try to revitalize and learn how to play this musical instrument deliberately. From this point of view, uh, we might argue that Pinpia and its identity has already been preserved by young musicians. However, the question of the change of Pin Pia's sonic identity and how it represents in modern Lana culture are also taken into consideration. Even though Pin Pia is already maintained, there are very few music scholars and academic articles identify the change of Pin Pia's musical identity and its variety in different areas of Lana region. Based on my field research in Northern Thailand in 2021, I explored the musical identity of Pinbia music in Chiang Mai, Lampun, and Lampang province. I found that the identity and styles of Pinbia music have been developed and awarded in Lana region over the last decade. In my field research, I interviewed five famous Pinbia musicians from different provinces in Lana, Northern Thailand and also record their pinpia performance. Even though these musicians play in the same piece of music, they, their sonic identity and style of music are different. Apparently, the style of four-string uh, pinpia music from famous musician Mr. Visantat 
Mr. Quan Chai and Mr. Tawa Chai are good examples of illustrating the sonic characteristics of Pinpei in Lana region. I will show the videos of these three musicians performing Pinpei in Prasad Wai, which means Quaking Castle, the sacred musical piece in Lana music. Um, the first one, uh, the performance of Mr. Visatat. The distinctive feature of Mr. Visantas Pinpia performance is the using left hand fingers to pluck the string quickly in alternation with plucking the box string in making an overtone with the right hand fingers. He tends to make beautiful melody with the movement of the resonator galong on his chest in different speeds. He tends to make balance of the melody and sound identity of his Pinpia music. Next, I'm going to show you the clip video of Mr. Quan Chai playing Pin Pia in Prasad Wai. The musical character of Mr. Quan Chai is the strong and powerful plucking on the box string in making an overtone. His resonator movement can be separated into three steps, slow, medium, and fast. This also alternates with hood, the slide up and down musical technique with fingers on the string. Mr. Quan Chai normally used his nail of the little fingers on the left hand to pluck all three strings quickly in alternation with the overtones made by the right hand fingers. This makes his sonic identity powerful and vivid and it becomes his outstanding style. Um, I'm going to show you the clip video of Mr. Quan Chai performance.
The sound identity of Mr. Thawat Chai's pin beer performance refers to the way of playing pin beer in traditional style in the regular tempo. His unique musical style is the way of plucking an overtone with the right hand fingers in alternation with plucking other strings regularly with the left hand fingers. During the performance, he normally makes triplet at the end of every sentence of the melody. Um, from the video, we can see that uh, each musician creates their own sonic identity and style of playing pin beer. This relates to the musical techniques that they apply for their music. From my field work, Mr. Visantat made use of six main musical techniques for creating his pin beer style, including pok jok sabat hood, yak um kai, with one special technique without name. Whereas Mr. Quan Chai established his own seven main musical techniques, including Pok Pan Jok Lai, Kai Hap Hood Tech, and another four special techniques with our name as well. However, Mr. Tawat Chai also owned eight musical techniques for his Pin Pia style, comprising Ping Jok Kia Wak, Hap, Ping and God. Hung and Sam Sieng. Surprisingly, it seems that musicians have different ideas of applying musical techniques in their performance. The variety of those musical techniques with different names represent the sonic identity and musical idea that musicians created. As for the Pin Pia's identity, um, Mr. Wisan Tat claimed that the musical style is related to his um, musical experience and ideology that he tried to express his music to be more beautiful and peaceful. The sound of his pin beer relates to the sound of nature leading to the Zen mediation in Buddhism. Why Mr. Quan Chai argued that his music involved with the concept of showing respect to the Hindu god Shiva. He tried to develop his musical identity to be more vivid by advancing the traditional pin pet techniques such as pok hood and kai hap which means the making an overtone soaring up and down the string and the movement of the resonator in different versions and also by imitating and adapting the musical techniques of foreign musical instruments such as the chinese kuchong into pin pet arguably mr um, towa chai's musical identity is involved with the pin pet traditional concept that he learned from different music masters in Lampang province. It is similar to the melody of Gong Circle in the Lana Pipat Ensemble. However, he also claimed that he adapted Pinpia's sonic identity and techniques from his music master to his own style. As mentioned above, we can see that the three Pinpia musicians represent the variety of musical identities in Pinpia music. The sonic characteristic of Pin Pia have been developed through musicians' musical aesthetics, which each musician creates their own musical identity through musical expression and advanced musical techniques. This illustrates the development of Pin Pia music in Lana culture and also the diversity of Pin Pia identity in different areas of Lana region. As for the change of pin beer's identity, we can compare the style of pin beer in my field work with the research and recording of Jaro P. Dai and American ethnomusicologist in 1967. I argue that pin beer nowadays has been very much changed and developed in several aspects, such as its musical concept, musical techniques, and even the design and structure of pin beer instrument that's really far away from the Lan Nao music tradition. The performance of Mr. Visantat, Quan Chai, and Tawat Chai shows the way in which Thai musicians revitalize Pin Pia music and how they recreate its musical identity through their own musical experience in Lana music and of the music in everyday life in modern Lana culture. This responds to the view of famous musicians, Mr. Quan Chai and Visantat, about the change of Pin Pia's identity. They argue that um, the reason why Pin Pia has to be developed is because the role of Pin Pia in the Lana society already changed. Pin Pia at present has to be functional more than courting the women in the village. So they developed the sound identity and style of Pin Pia to be more vivid and louder to establish the value of Pin Pia music 
as living pin beer. This also supports the idea of applying pin beer to play with other musical instruments in the Lana music ensemble. In fact, pin beer can be updated, adapted to use in different musical events or occasions such as religious ceremony, celebration, and also entertainment in modern Lana society. Apparently, the variety of pin beer's sonic identity gives rise how Lana musicians develop their musical identity and represent themselves in modern Lana culture. They revitalize pin beer's identity by creating their own musical expression and unique technique with the concept of living pin beer. Arguably, pin beer's sonic identity represents the emotional states of being and gives the characters of musicians into the voice that describe the change of people's folk life in modern Lana of Thailand. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you.